How did you do? How did you do? So remember, you were, your goal was to reduce, uh, using the power reducing formula, you were to reduce this cosine to the fourth power of x to a single power of cosine, okay? I hope you were successful. I'm going to narrate my steps for you, okay? I hope you were using this guy the whole time, yeah? Because remember, power reducing is almost always all in cosine format. So cosine 2u is equal to 1 plus cosine 2u over 2. So I'm going to rewrite that using that, right? It's this power reduced twice. All right, now I'm going to multiply that out. Is that what you guys did? Good, good call, good call, okay? So I got this, 1 plus 2 cosine 2x plus cosine squared 2x over 4. Because when I multiply that, that's what I end up with, okay? Now, 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 I know some of you guys smarty pants, you noticed something, right? You were like, what? This is power reducing again. So power reduce, right? Again, power reduce again. But remember, let u equal 2x, okay? So I did that, and I got this. Nothing else changed from here, right? It's 1 plus cosine 2x over 4, but this guy is now written this way. Again, this 4x, if that's tricky, make sure you ask the most trustworthy person next to you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify more. So I get this, right? I simplified everything, right? I separated these, and I let this 2 go down. That's, because, that's why this 8 appeared. I added the 1 hat, 1 together, right? Like all these little algebra calculations. So try to get this, okay? Just using uh, algebra and calculations. And here, when I simplify all this, I end up with this, okay? All right, well, if you, uh, these are like really classic problems of power reducing, so make sure you become comfortable with them, okay? All right, um, just ask questions uh, to each other and also practice and also ask me when I get back, okay? Now, we did power uh, reducing, right? Now let's try some half-angle formulas, okay? Half-angle formulas are pretty useful, too. All right, now, this is number 41 from your textbook. Use the half-angle formula to find the exact values of sine, cosine, and tangent of 112 degrees and 30 minutes? What? You thought this would never come back and haunt you, right? But you can see why the half-angle formula is used for this, okay? So think about that, okay? Sine of 112 degrees and 30 minutes is what does that mean? Doesn't that merely mean sine of half of what? 225, right? And 225, ding, 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 is not a value that we already know, okay? It's a value that we know, right? So that's why it's useful. Now think about it. This is a half angle formula, isn't it? So which half angle formula will you use, right? So locate your half angle formula. Have you located your half angle formulas? Okay. Once you've located your half angle formula, here's what you're going to do. Oh, which one are you going to use, right? So sine, right, half angle is what? Uh, let me look at my formulas too. Sine of half angle is what? U over 2 is equal to 2 plus or negative square root of 1 minus cosine of U all over 2, okay? So you guys, you have that half angle formula and you're going to apply it here. So what is your, technically your U, right? Your U is 225. So let's rewrite that. Sine of 225 divided by 2. Does that look like that? Great. And then just apply the formula, okay? So you're going to go plus or negative, right? Square root of 1 minus cosine of 225, which you know, okay? All over 2. Okay? And that equals plus or negative, right? Square root of what's cosine of 225? You got it. It's negative root 2 over 2 all over 2, okay? And when you simplify that, you'll get 1 half 2 plus root 2. I know that the answer looks kind of funky, but that's what it is, okay? All right. So you guys, are we okay with this? Oh, I'm sorry. It should be. So it's plus or negative because depending on the quadrant, right? Where is 225, you guys? Where is 225? It's in the what quadrant? That's what you got to think about, okay? It's in the third quadrant, therefore, the sign is going to be negative or positive. It's going to be negative in this case, right? All right? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're talking about this angle. Sorry, we're talking about this angle. Where is that angle? It's positive, right? It's positive or negative because of this right here, the angle that you're talking about. You get it? Do you see how powerful this is? If I asked you, hey, 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 um, I don't know, Bryony, e, the sign of 112 degrees 30 uh, minutes, Think about it. You wouldn't know. But if I gave you 225, you would know, and you would know how to derive that by doing this, okay? 
So it's only plus or negative because of that. Now, why don't you stop the video and try cosine and tangent, okay? Try cosine and tangent on your own using the half angle formula, okay? So I'm going to actually show it to you, but I'm going to narrate it, okay? So I'm going to take this off for a second, and I'm going to do sine, I'm sorry, cosine, cosine of 112 degrees and 30 minutes, okay? And think about the formula that you're going to use. Again, you're going to use cosine of 225 over half. That's why it's called a half angle formula. All right? What formula are you going to use? You're going to use a formula that says cosine, right? U over 2. Locate that on your formula ship. And it looks like this. Plus or negative square root of 1 plus cosine of theta all over, I'm sorry, U, U over 2. So apply that formula. Now I got plus or negative square root of, right? 1 plus cosine of 225 degrees all over 2. Plus or negative. But you guys, let's stop putting plus or negative. Isn't it just plus? Because Oh, I'm sorry. Isn't it just negative? Because this angle relies on second quadrant. So here's what you get. You get square root of, you're going to be a negative, so let's just put a negative there. 1, what's, a, a square, what's the cosine of 225? It's going to be root 2 over 2, negative, right? So I change that sign, and you end up with negative 1 half, 2 minus root 2. Just do the calculation here on your own, okay? So I guess if you want me to show it, it's going to be like this. Negative 1 minus root 2 over 2 over 2. So what I would do, that would multiply everything by 2. It's complex fractions, right? So you get 2 minus root 2 over 4. The square root of 4 is 2. That's why the 2 came out, okay? Why don't you guys try tangent of 112 degrees and 30 minutes on your own and stop the video and come back when you're ready to look at it, okay? Tangent half angle is what? Make sure you know the formula. Tangent half angle u over t is going to be 1 minus cosine of u over sine u. This is the most interesting one, right? Because it doesn't look like the other one. 1 minus, I'm going to rewrite this. This is 225 divided by 2. 1 minus cosine of theta. And think about it. What is this a positive or a negative, right? So you know this is going to be a negative because it's in the second quadrant again. So it's 1 minus, but it's going to come out naturally for this one. That's why there's no plus or negative here. 1 minus cosine of theta over sine theta. But I'm, I know I still use theta here, but you know what I mean, right? So it's 1 minus cosine of 225 divided by 225. Oh, sine. Sorry. Sine of 225. And you know all these values. What's 1 minus 225? I'm sorry. What's 1 minus cosine of 225? It's root 2 over 2 negative, right? All over Sine of 225 is going to be negative root 2 over 2. I'm sorry, this guy. Cosine of 225 is all positive because it's negative, right? So what you end up with is negative 1 minus root 2. And that tangent of this weird angle, 112 degrees and 30 minutes. Okay? And you would use that half angle formula. Okay? All right. So stop the video and be sure you uh, digest that before you move on. Okay? Let's use another problem for half angle formulas. Okay? Find all solutions of this. I'm going to write it big for you. 2 minus sine squared x equals 2 cosine squared x over 2 in the interval 0 to 2 pi. Okay? Now, you can see where the sine, a half angle formula will be needed, right? Okay? And so let's actually, uh, you can see a lot of things that's going to happen. So you're like, hmm, I've never done a problem like this. So let's try this. 2 minus sine squared x. Let's leave that alone. Okay? 2. What's this guy, though? We're going to be using the half-angle formula, right? Is it the half-angle formula? Well, let's rewrite it and see what happens, okay? So let's go like this. Uh, plus or negative, right? Square root of, the half, applying the half-angle formula is going to be 1 plus cosine of x over 2, correct? But that's coming from the half-angle formula. But it says cosine squared, so we got to actually square that sucker. Okay, so you can see how this problem gets easier, right? Because you're just squaring this. So let's rewrite the left-hand side. 2 minus sine squared x is equal to, when you square this, what's the only thing that happens? It comes out of the shell. So you squared it, okay? Isn't that nice? Now the problem makes it, so, it's so much easier to solve this problem, right? I can see that some of you guys are like, oh, I think I know what to do. And then, of course, hiya, hiya, that comes out. 2 minus sine squared x is equal to 1 plus cosine x. You're like, oh my god, it's such an easy problem now. You're right. It's a very simple question. 
it looked really difficult at first, right? So let's start solving. Maybe you guys can stop the video now and you can start solving right away, okay? Uh, what I would do here, oh, again, this is all two different trig functions. So what do you want to do? You want to make it into one trig function, right? So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 minus 1 minus cos squared x. Remember, you have the Pythagorean identity equals 1 plus cosine, sorry, cosine of x. Cosine of x, okay? All right. Now, when you simplify this, you get cosine squared x minus cosine of x. You can see how everything disappears and it becomes a really simple, simple question. Right? This all comes to be this. If you don't understand, ask the most trusty, worthy person for the algebra help. And you want to factor this out. So you get cosine of x, cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. And you solve individually these factors. You get cosine of x equals 0. So that means x is pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And you have no extraneous solutions. It's from 0 to 2 pi. Yes, yes, yes. Check, check, check. Cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. Where is cosine of x equal to 1? You say 0. Yes. And here's the solution. And here are the solutions. Okay. All right. Uh, please look on to the next part if you're ready to move on, okay?